again and thank you for watching this module, module 5 of our series on playing association croquet. Uh, this module is about building a break. We've looked at the various components of the break building so far. This is about putting it all together. I should say that all the shots you're going to see are real. I've made no attempt to repeat them or edit them for filming purposes um, because this is what you've got to do when you're playing a break for real. Things are going to go wrong and you've just got to get used to picking up the detritus off the ground and making it better than it might otherwise have been. And luck to the skill of association croquet is first of all doing simple shots. Don't try and make them complicated. As I've said before, it's an easy game if your balls are in the right places. And then also, if things do go wrong, think about the best possible way of getting things back onto an even keel. And if you've got bisques, then use them for that purpose rather than simply making an odd hoop here or there. At the end of module two, I showed you a typical opening sequence in, in, in a game where I had two balls on the east boundary and I rushed the black up to this position, just short of hoop three, with the blue ball. So I'm playing the blue ball. And if you remember, uh, my opponent had put a red ball as a tice halfway down the west boundary and then shot at that and missed so his yellow ball ended up in corner two. So I've now got to start and build a break from here and as we said before always go for the most difficult ball first and that in this case is the yellow ball over in corner two and so just as we did in the last module, I'm going to do uh, a thin takeoff, leaving the black here, and then going across and trying to pick up the yellow. So I've ended up, what, four yards or so from the yellow. Could have been done with being a bit closer, but you've always got to um, remember the fact that if you go off the lawn in a, a croquet shot such as that, it's end of turn. And you don't want to be end of turning when you've got an opponent ball close to. So I just need to roquet this yellow. And so now the yellow comes back onto the lawn on the corner spot. So here I am in corner two, taking croquet off the yellow. And I need to get the yellow out into the lawn. It's no good to me here in the corner. I really want to make it the pioneer for hoop two. But I also need to pick up the red ball, which is on the boundary halfway down the lawn. Here is the red ball, which my opponent uh, used as a tice and put it on the west boundary so it's, it's on the yard line and I need to get my blue ball to roughly where this target is so that I can rush it, rush the red ball from here down towards hoop one. And in, in any game of croquet, particularly when you've got no bisques, hoop one is nearly always the most difficult because your opponent has put balls in awkward places and you've got to come all the way around the lawn in order to get to a position where you can start to, to get your own ball in a hoop running position. And it's tricky, it's very tricky. Uh, let's have a go and see what happens. I'm going to play the uh, croquet shot on the yellow with a split roll. So I want the yellow ball to come roughly to about here in front of hoop two and the blue ball to go down the yard line and end up roughly on my black uh, target marker there. Of course, in real life, you don't have target markers, but for, for the purposes of the film, we put one out. And this is a, quite a tricky shot because the blue ball must not go off the court, otherwise it's end of turn. Remember, it's a croquet shot. If either ball goes off the court in a croquet shot, it's end of turn. And I have no bisques, so I need to be a little bit careful.
So as you can see, I'm a few feet short of my target, but I'll settle for that. I'm reasonably well in line with the red. I need to rush the red down the lawn towards hoop one. So let's get rid of the target. So I can now take croquet off the red and my first job is to make sure that the red is on the yard line. If a ball is played, you must make sure that it comes back onto the yard line like so. It's only the striker's ball that is not moved if it goes into the yard line area. But all of the balls, if they end up in this area between the yard line and the boundary, they come back onto the yard line before the next shot, no matter where they are. So I now need to do a split roll and again quite a tricky little shot because I need to get the blue ball into a hoop running position. So I'm aiming to get my blue ball into a hoop running position for hoop one which is about here. Don't try and get close to the hoop when you're doing a shot where you're coming across the face of the hoop. That is very, very difficult indeed. Have a look at the golf croquet modules where I show you just how difficult it is. So aim to come back into, what, about four and a half feet from the, from the hoop, which gives you a reasonable uh, target, uh, a range of error to, to aim for. It doesn't much matter where the red goes. It can be anywhere on the, on the dead side of the hoop. So I've ended up a bit further away from the hoop than I'd have liked, but it's dead straight in line and I'm reasonably confident about making this. So there we are. It, uh, it crept through, but they all count. Pick up the clip and then we're okay the red. So I've brocaded the, uh, the, the red and I'm going to take croquet in a moment. The yellow ball, which we played out of corner two, is quite handily placed here. Um, it's, it's in a reasonable position as a, as a hoop two pioneer. The black ball is halfway between hoops three and four. So I'm going to leave that alone for the moment and we'll come back to it in a moment. So I'm going to uh, croquet the, the red ball across to hoop three is my hoop three pioneer and in the same shot get up to the yellow ball so it's going to be a half roll so roqueting the yellow And that's quite nicely placed in front of hoop two. Uh, quite a simple little drive shot here. So I've come through hoop two, simple roquet on the yellow, not hitting it hard. So I'm going to croquet the, uh, the yellow ball down to hoop four as my hoop pi four pioneer and in the same shot, which will be a split drive, go across to get into position to rush red over to hoop three. So I rushed red over here, it's come a bit further than I really wanted, but never mind. And uh, so I'm just going to do a little 
um, drive shot which will put red back on the dead side of the hoop. And then pop the blue through. I came through hoop three rather further than I'd have wanted, but it's a bit embarrassing if when you're close up to a hoop like that and you tap the ball gently and it sticks in the hoop. I'd much rather be a little bit further through and definitely through the hoop than, uh, than, than facing the embarrassment of sticking, especially as that's an enemy ball. So I'm now going to roque the red, which is my reception ball. Now, have you noticed that although this is nominally a four ball break, I've actually only used three balls so far. We've run three, three hoops with three balls, the, the blue, the red and the yellow. The black hasn't played any part at all in this break so far. Uh, it, nominally, it's the pivot, nominally. And you can get away without a pivot, but you must have pioneers. Pioneers are absolutely essential. So, what I haven't got at the moment are pioneers at hoops four and five. I've got black and yellow somewhere in the middle of the lawn. So what I'm going to do now is to go and pick up the black, use it as a pivot, and uh, then pick up the yellow as my hoop four pioneer, although it doesn't know it yet. Just lining that up. So this is a, a roll shot, getting the red ball down into the lawn and getting the um, the blue ball to the left of black as I'm looking at it towards the east boundary. So I'm now going to roque the black and then croquet shot it across to hoop five as my hoop five pioneer. And in this shot, which will be a split half roll, I'm going to put the blue ball in a position to rush the yellow down towards hoop four. So my blue ball has gone slightly further than I'd have liked. I'd have really wanted it to be here so that it's in a direct line with hoop four, it's gone another two and a half feet. So I'm going to have to play a cut rush on the yellow. And this basically means it's rather like having a ball which is there, which is in a direct line with the hoop. And if that, remember that when balls are touching, this uh, object ball will go in the direct line of centers. So if my blue ball hits the yellow where this green striping ball is, the yellow will go off in that direction, in a direct line of the two centres. So that's a cut rush and uh, we'll see if I can do one. So I managed to cut rush the yellow down to here. I'd have liked it a bit closer to the hoop, but we can manage. So now I'm taking croquet off the yellow and I'm going to play a little roll shot, dead straight, more or less, towards the hoop. And then with the continuation, just bob it through the hoop. I've come through hoop four with the blue. I'm now going to roque the yellow. Very easy little shot. And now I have a quite a reasonable pioneer for hoop five. But I've got a red ball over here, which is effectively the pivot, which is again in no man's land. And I don't want to leave it there. So I need, in this shot, I'm going to put the yellow up to hoop six as my hoop six pioneer. And with the a split uh, roll, I'm going to take the blue over towards red and bring the red back into the court nearer the peg. 
So this is a split roll. My blue ball has actually not ended up in the right place. I really wanted it to, about, to be about here. And, and my yellow ball, instead of going up to hoop six, has stopped halfway. So I'm still lacking a hoop six pioneer. So in order to get this, I'm going to make the red ball my hoop six pioneer, but in order to get it there and get my blue onto the black to take hoop five, I'm going to rush the red uh, down the lawn towards hoop four, which will give me a better line and an easier split. So by bringing the, the red all the way down here, it's a half roll shot, putting the red up to hoop six and then very easily taking the blue across to the black by hoop five. Where it was before would have been an impossible uh, split roll. So I've now got my blue to here. I'm just going to rotate the black quite gently. And from there, a little croquet shot. In a little split, half rollish. Through the hoop, but not very far. And then play the black again. I played the black quite hard down here because I want it to be my pioneer for hoop one back, which is over there in the far corner. And I also want to play off the yellow ball, which is now a pivot in the centre of the lawn. So in order to give myself the stopping space to get the black ball over to there and the blue ball halfway down the lawn, I needed to come back here so that I can play a half roll shot. So I've, I've managed to get the, the blue ball down towards the yellow and I'm now going to rotate the yellow. Now from here I could in fact just do a little take off and uh, go to the hoop because my red ball which I had in fact put up here as a pioneer has gone too far and uh, if I run through the hoop I can easily pick up the red ball. So I've run hoop six and I've got a, my black is my pioneer for one back, but I need to pick up the red because that's going to be my hoop two back pioneer down in the far corner. What was hoop one? So I'm going to croquet the red ball down to two back and in this shot, which will be a split half roll, I'm going to come off the yellow ball, which is my pivot, to come back here for the black as my hoop one back pioneer. Gone a bit far, but never mind. Just doing a thin take off again, leaving the yellow here and going across toward, towards the black. Again, just a little easy roque on the black.
and black became the reception ball, so a, a little bit okay again, very gently. Now, I'm going to send my black ball to hoop three back in the far corner there, as my three back pioneer, and I really want to be um, north of the yellow ball so that I can rush it down the lawn. As you saw, my red ball, my hoop two pioneer, went a bit further than it ought to have done. It's actually behind the hoop, which is not a good place to be. So I want to try and get the yellow ball down there in order that I can get between the red and the boundary and bring it back towards the hoop. So this is going to be a more or less straight drive. I think I'm going to hit the peg if I do that. If you hit the peg, by the way, it doesn't matter one jot at this stage of the game. It's just an obstacle. I'm now going to rush the yellow towards the south boundary of the lawn because it's much easier to get behind that red ball going acrosswise than going at it from this angle. There's a great danger of going off the lawn if you're not careful. So if by rushing the yellow down the lawn, I make the angle less acute and a lot easier to get into. So again, a little cut rush, just striking the red towards the right of the ball. Could have been a bit better, but never mind, it'll do. I've now got the red on the live side of the hoop, so I just need to do a little split shot here, making sure that those balls are touching. and through the hoop. I, I've got a reasonable Pioneer for three back, which is the black. I have two balls quite close together here, which is a bit awkward. I'd have liked one to be towards the centre of the lawn, but so I'm going to have to play a, a little bit out and back to pick up the, the yellow ball. I'm going to rush the red ball towards the centre of the lawn and then with the croquet shot come back and pick up the yellow. So I've got my red ball more or less on the centre line of the lawn. I could easily from here go across to the black rush it up to, hoop, up to hoop three back and make that. But I'd have left a ball behind. And try not to leave balls behind. You need those balls to be going around the lawn with you. So I'm going to play um, a, a, a simple little takeoff here, go back to the yellow and then bring back, back up here as well so that I can get then back onto the black off the yellow. rush the yellow as far as I can up the lawn. We now have all the uh, three non-strikers balls on the at least the correct side of the lawn. So I can start to move them around once I've got through hoop three back. So I now need to go back from here with the, take, again, taking off from the yellow and going down towards black ball to um, use that as my pioneer for, for three back. And again, I'm on the wrong side of the hoop. We're coming through from the other side. So I need to try and cut rush this black 
to the other side of the uh, hoop to take croquet off it. So this is a much more comfortable position to be uh, uh, starting to run the hoop from than uh, trying to get um, my ball into a hoop running position from the wrong side of the hoop. Again, just, just a very simple split shot. And bob it through the hoop. So I've come through three back and this is going to be my pioneer for penultimate but my other balls are down the centre of the line of the lawn and it's much easier to get into the right position if all the balls and the hoops are in a straight line. So I'm going to put the black ball across towards the centre into what's known as the rush line. And I've actually come a fraction too far, so I'm right behind hoop five. What you must not and may not do, of course, is to move the croquet ball. You can move the, you can move the striker's ball around the uh, croquet ball, but you must not move this ball. And I'm just trying to, I'm right behind the hoop, so I'm just trying to make the minimum gap and I may well end up hitting the red ball here. So this is just a very simple half roll shot. Or a cross between a half roll and a drive really. So my black ball managed to squeeze through the gap and it's quite nicely placed now for a uh, penult pioneer. My uh, blue ball actually touched the red, I don't know if you noticed that, so I must take croquet off the red now, which is fine because red is effectively now my pivot, and I'm going to pick up the, the yellow ball to rush that across to hoop four back. So this is just a, a simple thin takeoff. So I'm just going to rush the, uh, the yellow ball across to four back. Taking croquet again off the yellow. Now you can see where the, the little exercise about circles comes in. Because here I am, this is just a very dainty little cross between a half roll and a, and a drive. I've now run hoop four back. In other words, I've run ten hoops. I've got two more hoops to go in theory. Now, the question is, do I want to run all twelve hoops or not? There are two options really. First of all, I could take it all the way around to the peg and put my clip on the peg. There are two risks of doing that. First of all, my opponent could also take a ball around to peg and then once he's got through rover, he could hit my blue ball against the peg, peg me out, and then I'd only have one ball, my black, left to play with. So that is a fairly high risk strategy. The other problem is, that once I've run Rover, I would have no more hoops to run. And that would mean that I could only have seven shots in a given turn with my blue ball. In other words, a roquet and a croquet with each of the other three balls, and then a final continuation stroke. That would be the seven strokes. And that is quite limiting, really. And if I've st still got at least one hoop, in my back pocket as it were, that would give me at least another six strokes to play with. I've decided that I'm going to stop after running penult because that will give me one hoop rover in, in the bag as it were and it also enables me to make a leave for my 
uh, opponent. A leave is putting the balls somewhere which is going to hopefully cause one's uh, opponent a bit of grief, perhaps encourage him to use a bisque or two, but at the same time leaving my own balls reasonably close together so that I can start a break in my next turn. So at this point in the game I need to be thinking about what I'm going to do with my opponent balls. I don't want to leave my opponent with a nice easy pickup somewhere. I need to put his balls somewhere which is going to cause him a bit of grief and hopefully force him to use a bisque or two. So I'm going to play the yellow here quite gently and then I'm going to put it into corner two so that I can get to the black ball which is beside penult. So I'm going to play the croquet shot, just a little drive, putting the yellow on a two or thereabouts. Just come round a fraction. Remember it must not go off the lawn otherwise it's end of turn. Well it hasn't gone quite into corner two but it's not bad. So now I'm playing off my black ball. Again just a little touch is all that's necessary. That is through. This blue ball has actually run the hoop because there's no blue showing on this live side of the hoop. By just squinting along the line of the two uprights you can see that there's, there's no blue there. It's only just through but it is through. Now my problem of course is that I must leave it there and I've got to hit the, the black ball. So I've come through the hoop but only just and the upright is obscuring half of the ball so I need to be very careful about how I hit it and what you can do is to of course if you've got a, a, a flat bottomed mallet stand the mallet up line it up and then just step back and make sure that the everything's in line the blue ball the black ball and everything else it doesn't matter if I hit the the, the wire of the hoop except in so far as if I do I may well miss the, the black. So here goes. I rocade the, the black ball and this is the last hoop I'm going to play in this turn. Now normally one would want to play one's own partner ball last but uh, given the way that things are I'm going to play into corner four. Uh, even though the black is still for hoop one and it would be easy to put it over there but my opponent's balls are also for hoop one so I don't want to give him an easy entry should he happen to hit in. So I'm going to just do a little half roll drive and I want to get onto the other side of the red ball with my blue. So here's my um, red ball, my opponent's red ball. I'm going to put it into, I could actually put it into corner three or corner one. I think I'd rather put it into corner three. So I'm just going to rocade it gently. I rocade the red, ball in hand. So I'm going to stop shot it across towards corner three. And then with my continuation shot, go and join my own partner ball over by hoop four. So I, I'm, I'm still here in the centre of the lawn with my blue. I'm going to back to join up with my, with my partner ball, the black, and I'm going to leave my black ball a little rush to get up to hoop one, which is his first hoop. That's the end of my turn. I've run 11 hoops and I've left my own balls 
fairly close together with a little rush and the opponent balls there's one towards hoop three and there's one towards hoop two. My, my opponent balls are well spread apart. I've left my own balls quite close together which is a bit of a risk actually because if he were to hit one with the other, say he were to play yellow at red, hit the red, he could come down to my balls and uh, get across to hoop one fairly easily. Of course, and if he's got bisques of course that would make it even easier. If he hasn't got bisques then this is not a bad leave. But you always have to take that little risk. You, I could have left my balls further apart but that would also have given me the risk of missing when I come to play the black in the next turn. I've now finished my turn so I take my blue clip off my person and attach it to the rover hoop because that's the next hoop that the blue ball has yet to run. And you notice that it, the clip now goes on the side on the leg of the hoop rather than on the top. After hoop six when we're on the return leg we put the clips on the side leg of the hoop not on the top. Thank you for watching that module uh, in which we've tried to show you how to go about building a break. In our next module which I've called picking it up we look at how uh, the opponent player can start to pick up a break when he's been sitting on the sidelines watching someone go around to hoop 11.